Because here's the shit storm. On one hand, you've got Trump and Sanders, both anti-establishment, want to mm -hmm. shake it up. On the other hand, you got a Congress that's gerrymandered in and protected, and therefore can just live on purity of ideology and not do nothing. Yeah. Right? So they're all going to get, at some point, if America in 2016 elects an anti-establishment candidate. Then everybody's going to turn their sights on that yeah. gerrymandered whatever it is. Yeah. And, and just vote everybody out. Leave your playing by the rules at the door. It's time for Carl and Mike. Whoa. Welcome, Carl and Mike. I'm Carl. And I'm Mike. And we're here at the Noisy Corner Bakery it's Cafe, beautiful Dallas, Texas. I thought by 1.30 everybody would be out of here, but it's Friday. It's These are the people Thursday. that called in sick. That's right. It's a, quite a more boisterous crowd, if you will, on a Friday. Do I need to stand up and say, shut the fuck up? Yeah. Tell them, hey, we got a podcast here. You don't seem to care. No. We, know, we don't We don't want... Isn't it amazing how we much don't want really idle chit-chat. Yeah. No, we're left totally alone. Which is really kind of microphones in front of which is really kind of shocking. I mean, this is this is going to be seventy what second seventy third seventy third. We've had people come out and talk to us what two three times maybe. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, they're either shy or just completely oblivious to their surroundings. Yes, I think they're I think, just in the, everybody's in their own little world, really. You know, I think if you sit down and I'm sitting here or looking around at people's tables, I think everybody is pretty much in their own little world and they're completely oblivious to what's going on around them. Or maybe we're oblivious to them. And yeah, so I could stand up right us. now and shoot somebody in the head and nothing would happen, right? Uh, yes. <laughs> you and Donald. How many people are wearing concealed weapons right now? No. No. You know, that's another thing. I've been wondering when I was going to see somebody wearing yeah. an open weapon. One? No, I have not. Have you seen anybody no. wearing an open weapon? Not yet. There's probably some concealed weapons in here. I don't give a shit if I don't see it. It's just another thing to have to carry. So you do it the first day, you know, you get the concealed weapon, and you're like, oh, great, I get to put on my Look concealed Look at me, weapon. I'm a man, I'm carrying my firearm. You go out there, arm. right, and yeah. you go, really, nobody pays attention. Yeah, don't fuck with so me. you're not getting any attention, necessarily. No, you're not getting any attention. And, and then, you know, the next day, you know, i got to put that on my belt. I gotta, you know, it's another thing to do. Yeah. We're basically lazy as a creature. And I'm not going to put bullets in it so I don't shoot myself in the leg. Yeah, or in the nut sack. Yeah. With all yeah. that happening now blow off a nut. I really don't want to blow off a nut. No, you really yeah. don't. That would hurt. Yeah. So what's going on, Carl? Well, I just uh, was up in Minnesota. Minnesota? Went to Minnesota for the weekend. Was it cold up there? It was eight. Ooh. Is that cold for Minnesota? Or is uh, that just kind of balmy for this time eight of year? Eight was the high. Eight was the high. Yeah. That's cold pretty much anywhere. Here's the deal, though, with Minnesota, which is kind of like Dallas in the summer, right? You, you have limit. First off, everybody's got a car starter turns the heat on so by the time you get in the car and the, that's sitting in the garage seriously they oh, automatically yeah, yeah. they that's start it. them in the Remote, in the garage right? yeah so the garage is filling up with uh, carbon monoxide yeah basically yes but the car is warming up oh, okay cool so you know it's kind of like dallas in august you know You're, you go from 72 degree house to a you know 60 degree car because then you feel you know Two yeah. seconds of cold. Yeah. And then you get there, you park, and, you know, there's a momentary cold from furnace. where you're going. Yeah. Okay, yeah. But you're not really in the yeah. cold. You know, unless you're out there. So did you have a so good time up tons there? Tons of snowmobiles. Oh, you did I, some snowmobiles? I know I didn't, but I saw it. Yeah. I mean, pretty much the road is on the sides of the road. You've got snowmobiles. Do you snowmobile cheese? Going. Huh? Do you eat cheese? Don't they serve cheese to everybody who gets off the plane? No. No? That's Wisconsin. Huh? Wisconsin, Wisconsin's Minnesota. The what the no, fuck's the difference? difference? No, it's like it's saying really Texas and New, New Mexico. No, there's a huge difference. One no. of them square with a little <laughs> wad at the end. And then, yeah. No. Well, Minnesota is the 10,000 lake. No cheese. No cheese. I went to the uh, original Hell's Kitchen, which was before the Hell's Kitchen TV series. It was thought you had to walk downstairs to yeah. it. It was all in red. It's pretty yeah. cool, actually. Now, Hell's Kitchen is what, for people that don't know, like me, because I've Hell's heard Kitchen, of Hell's Well, there's a TV show called Hell's Kitchen, yeah. which is a famous chef who puts these students through Hell's Kitchen. But oh, this, oh, that Hell's Kitchen. This name, this Hell's Kitchen happened long before. 
bathhouse kitchen. So it's actually a restaurant? Yes. Okay. What really kind of food do they serve? It was really good food. They had a uh, long 20-foot hallway where they had, on one side of the wall, they had um, Bloody Mary bar. And on the other side of the wall, they had a mimosa bar, kind of like heaven and hell. And, uh, and you'd put all this food stuff on these sticks inside your, inside your, and you'd pick the sauce you wanted to use for your, you know, they gave you a base and you built this Bloody Mary. And you had like, you know, all these different cheeses and stuff and olives and stuff you could put into it to create a Bloody Mary concoction. Now, Bloody Mary, this is not a drink. It's a... Bloody Mary. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a, a bloody drink. drink. But it's got skewers of food items that you can add to the Bloody Mary. And you put the skewers of food into the Bloody Mary. The food goes down in the Bloody Mary. Yeah. But it's it's Bloody Mary friendly food, if you will. Like you could have a shrimp or you could have a, you know, normally you get a Bloody Mary, you're going to get a pickle and an olive and stuff like that or whatever. These were just, you could take it to the extreme. I don't think I've ever had a Bloody Mary. You're kidding. No, I don't, we don't do mixed drinks. You've never had a Bloody Mary? Alcohol, me and hard alcohol do not mix. They just don't. What do you mean you don't mix? Uh, you gonna throw up? Yeah. One throw drink? Up, dry heaves. Well, it doesn't no, take much. No, you don't drink no. a lot. No, I, I don't. I just don't. You know, beer, wine, that's it. Really? Well, yeah. beer is alcohol. And Bloody, uh, Bloody Mary's alcohol. It's not yeah, that no, much but, more alcohol. Well, it's, I, I think there are too many college punch nights with uh, Everclear. And, yeah, you probably have that. But that's yeah, not. And just, I think if you had a Bloody Mary now, you would enjoy it. You're missing out. That, that would not be good. Probably, really? I, it's another vice I don't need. <laughs> I didn't feel head. drunk at the end of it. I didn't yeah. noticely feel. So you had a good trip then. Had a good trip. Now you know my family, of course, are um, in the Republican camp. Oh, they are. Yeah. Oh, that was interesting. Yeah. And we have you know, which particular Republican camp are they? Uh, are, well, which? they would argue that, yeah, that they're independent, but they're Republican. Yeah. Uh, and in the past, we haven't, you know, we've actually agreed not to talk politics because it got too heated sometimes. Mm-hmm. You know. uh, but we had an interesting, I got an interesting perspective that I didn't have before about about the appeal of Trump and about the mindset of at least where, I'm not saying they're representative of all Republicans, yeah. but there's definitely rep, their mindset, I think, is was a little surprising to me and probably more explains the uh, the mood of the country. Interesting. They were blow it up. Blow it up. The I'm, system sucks. Yeah. If it hasn't worked, it doesn't yeah. work, blow it up. For instance, they hated Rubio. Rubio okay. is just the Republican Obama. You know, they don't like Obama, of course. They feel like Fox News is part of the system. I don't watch what? Fox News. Yeah. I don't watch Fox News, so I don't. Roger, Roger Ailes, are you listening? In other words, that they're just got their own establishment agenda. <gasps> yes, you think? the Jeb Bush. The, uh-huh. So they're anti-establishment all the way. They're sick of uh, the Republican Party as a either a do-nothing party or they don't ever get anything they say they're going to do, whatever done. And you mean the party that tells you what you want to hear to get yeah. your vote and then the, does whatever the, the fuck they yeah, want to do? Exactly. Right. They're sick of that. Yeah. Well, that's pretty much the politics and, and in Fox, general. And Fox yeah. News is an extension of that. Oh, that's I found interesting. very interesting. Yeah. So, you know. Are they uh, fans of Carl and Mike? Uh, no, they don't think they listen. They li- they're fans of Five Questions in Five Minutes with Carl. Oh, okay. All right. Well, good. I don't, I don't think they uh, tune into our political. I don't know Probably if they can. They, could, okay. they would uh, not agree with it. Anyway, so what else? What it other could insight? be closet Carl and Mike's, but I got no indication. Closet Carl and Mike's. That would be interesting. Okay, so, uh, so um, what else? So Yeah, so they're, they're not uh, totally sold on Trump, mm-hmm. uh, but uh, they're leaning in But he's direction. a blow, blow him up kind of guy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, really just like Rubio... Yeah, Bush been there, done that. Christie don't like him. Uh, they were a little bit on Christie. What about Ted Cruz? I think the, I think they could have been for Ted Cruz, but there's just. Are these? I think, are they, I think they're too. He's too evangelical for them. Okay, so they're not hardcore evangelicals no, or anything. They don't go okay. to. They're uh, the Catholic. 
Yeah, but they're not even. There's a difference still. Yeah. Even though Catholic is gone, but I thought that was very interesting. So you know, Cruz or Trump, they don't know what they're going to get with Trump. What they're That's part of the appeal. The, That's part of the appeal. They're willing to roll the dice because nothing else. And I think you know we did the show just a couple of weeks. Got last yeah. an anti-establishment divide. Yeah. And Trump and I mean really, Trump isn't that the lesson this? Yeah. With yeah. Hillary losing yeah. by 22 points in New Hampshire. Which is really telling. Like I said to you earlier, Hillary's going to probably win all the red states, and uh, Sam is going to win all the blue states. And there are, you know, the last time blue states beat red states in the last two presidential elections, was that enough? The problem with the way it's scheduled is a lot of the red states go first on that Super Tuesday and stuff. A lot more red states go first, and then it's blue states. Narrative can change, right? Because yeah. Hillary wins all these red states, oh, then it's over. But then the blue states are cometh. Well, I wonder if the Republicans continue to move in the anti-establishment direction towards, towards Trump. Trump. Is that going to push more Democrats to do towards the same Sanders. thing towards Sanders? And I'd say I think probably. the country is. I, I think, yeah, I think it and, is. And what is the two things about Sanders and Trump that have in common the most? Isn't it that they're just being authentic? Better or worse? Well, you know, here's one thing that I, I heard one of the commentators say, who was part of the right. establishment, right. you know, that everybody's railing against, but I thought it was a good insight. When you go to their rallies, they have large crowds. They have people that are happy to be there with smiles on yes. their face that are enjoying it, that feel like they're part of a movement. Right. When you go to a Ted Cruz rally, he may have a bunch of people there, but they've all got yeah. sour looks on their faces, and they're pissed off. Yeah. And I thought, now that's an interesting insight. I haven't been to any of these, but this is somebody that's been to a number of right. them. And so I have to go with what it is they're saying. Whether that's true or not, I don't know. But mm -hmm. I'd, I would say that's a pretty good observation based on what I've seen on TV as far as showing the crowds. Yeah. The other thing, I think, there's two things. The establishment is politicians, but the establishment is media. Oh, absolutely. You know, I think, the, I think I, somebody I saw a mem that said basically if the media was running things, Sanders would have, they would have totally blocked him out. He is, the internet fuels him. Donald, you mm -hmm. know, most of his missives came through Twitter. Mm -hmm. You know, so I think this is a, so you've got three things. You got an authentic. You got fed up with the establishment that created yeah. that created the depression. You know, on the Democrat side, Obama wasn't enough. On the Republican side, he's you know could well, do could, no could right. You, could you say that Cruz is an establishment client uh, candidate too? But he's part of the religious establishment. Cruz is trying to say. I mean, seriously. I'm the real conservative, and I'm the real evangelical. Yeah. I'm the real deal. He's and he's only been in there once, so he's. Yeah. He is, you know, second. He's more outsider than insider. He's made no friends in Congress. Yeah. That's the appeal that Cruz yeah. had to my family. Was he ain't taking no, you know, he ain't making no friends there, and he shouldn't make any friends there because that place is all fucked up. So and Mitch it's, McConnell, it's thirty years against, of Mitch McConnell, one guy against the world. Then. Well, they just want it blown up. They want the system dismantled. You and I are not that far yeah, off. No, uh -uh. I don't Bernie have Bernie Sanders problem. wants the system I don't have dismantled. Now down. the question, really, the argument really is which which way is the system going to be? Dismantled? Total financial collapse first. I told you. That's, get, yeah. you know, that's, that's where what, you want to go. Yeah, no. Yeah. But doesn't I, Bernie want to dismantle the system just as much as yeah, and, and people want Trump to dismantle the I system? I actually heard a Republican say the other day they were talking about getting rid of Obamacare, and he said you can't just get rid of it. No. Unless you have something to put in its place immediately. Right. Because you've got a lot of people who now have insurance. Right. Okay. It's like, okay, here's a good example. I had one guy, he's railing, he's, you know, Ted Cruz all the way. Right. I've got a good bet going with him. $100. I have to pay him $100 if Ted Cruz becomes president. He oh, has to pay me 20 bucks if anybody else on the planet Is that sure wins. Ted Cruz is going to be yeah. president? Yeah. You got that one made. Duh. <laughs> I'd take that bet with anybody that wanted to walk through the door. But uh, his uh, monthly insurance is $1,700 a month yes. with $6,000 copay. Now, $1,700, yeah, that's high. Yeah, it's high because between he and his wife, there is a pre-existing condition that would 
preclude him from having any kind of insurance yeah. whatsoever. Right. So under he's the a Republican old on the old. So he doesn't want Obama replaced. Okay, but no, he wants it replaced. He does. Yes, he's willing to I, take I don't think he that understands he... that the old system he would not be able to get any insurance at I any price. It. Ted period. Cruz repealed every word of Obamacare on day yeah, one. Yeah, but anyway, what, that guy's out of insurance. Yeah, but this guy said, this Republican said, you know. They're, everybody's starting to wake up to some of this bullshit. They really don't have any choice but to wake up to it. They've been how many times have well, they voted the Republicans on repealing that have, that it? Are dependent on health care yeah. gonna wake up to yeah. it. Anyway, I think people are starting to see that this repetitive vote to appeal repeal yeah. Obamacare or what is it? Fifty and fifty something. I don't know how many times they voted on it, you know. It's, it's joke. It's it's showbiz. It's grandstanding, and everybody sees that, and that's a big part of what people are tired of. Whether they're Republican or Democrat, they're tired of that shit. There's a shit storm coming. There is. That would make a good episode yeah. name. Shit storm coming. Shit storm coming. Yeah, that could be our episode yeah. episode title right here. Uh, because here is the shit storm. On one hand, you've got Trump and Sanders, both anti-establishment, want to mm-hmm. shake it up. On the other hand, you got a Congress that's gerrymandered in and protect it and therefore can just live on purity of ideology and not do nothing yeah right so they're all going to get at some point if the america in 2016 elects an anti-establishment candidate then everybody's going to turn their sights on that yeah. gerrymandered whatever it is yeah and, and just vote everybody out the thing with the thing about trump that would be refreshing if you will come to I the dark side closer, you, because he and it got no press. Was Did you that? watch the debate when Rubio had his meltdown? No, but oh, I heard about it. Was, was it debate. good? But the best. So Christie did yeah. that. Yeah. Christie diced you. and Thank sliced you, him. Chris. Thank you, Chris Christie, and then left the race. Adios. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for taking one out. Yeah. Because I guess he got really pissed at the pack. Oh, he, cli- was really he clipped the fu- he clipped the fucker. Right. Yeah. Okay. But the best, which has gotten zero press, is what. So Trump and Bush are having this eminent domain argument back and forth, and the crowd starts to boo Trump, right? Because mm-hmm. uh, Jeb Bush says something like, "Trump tried to kick a grandma out of her house." Or yeah, like yeah. Uh, and so Bush oh, turns, and domain, Bush probably. turns and speaks truth. He says, the "Reason all these people are buying, are booing, is because these are all wealthy donors in this audience." Who I couldn't said, get tickets. Oh, Trump says Trump that. Says, yeah, I can't he's get right. tickets. And he's then the right. crowd boos more. Yeah. Right? Because and then and they you boo all you want. Because you yeah. guys, RNC, Ooh. paid tickets. You know, <laughs> you are all you are all the people contributing. And I, none es- of you are buying my stuff because I'm paying my own, basically. You are the establishment is basically what he's basically, saying. You are the you are the donors here today. Yeah. Oh. Calls the audience. Oh, out. that's right. I did see that. Now I thought, forgot about that. That but was the media a good has really hit. I did not hit on that. Well, of course oh, they don't want no. to do that because it's like you said earlier, the media is part of this establishment that right. everybody's pissed off about right. too. Right. People are getting more from their news feed. Yeah. In fact, both my nephew and niece, neither of them have cable TV and never will. Well, you really can't. whole can. generation. The only way to get any kind of news at all, everybody has their own filter. Every, you have a filter, I have a filter. Yeah. Everybody's got their own filter. And, and some people's filter is just straight up Fox News. Some people it's, it's Glenn Beck. Some people it's Rachel Maddow or Bill Maher. You know, yeah. whatever it is. Yeah. And the only way that you get even remotely an idea of what's going on in gen- is, is to sit down and take a broad view and listen to all of it. But that's, that'll fucking wear you out. Right. It wears me out. Yeah. Trying to cover all these a various lot. things. Yeah. The thing about it was bringing me back to the Trump, where the refreshing thing, because I could see him as president. Did you, say, this, did you say Donald is refreshing? Yeah, I did, didn't I? That's a scary moment in my <laughs> life. I have to come to face to face with who I am as a human it's being. like Fresca. I'm not saying I'm voting for Trump. I'm not. I'm just entertaining the idea of losing <laughs> Hillary Clinton <laughs> as the candidate. I could see him on a State of the Union just calling it out. Oh, yeah. Calling people out. And that. And that. that. Well, almost that's is what worth Bernie, the price of admission. That's what Bernie does, too. And that's yeah. what Elizabeth Warren has always done. Right. And by by calling them out, forcing the media then uh-huh. to look at it. Well, calling them out and forcing the public. To look at it. I, keep, I kept waiting, and I've been waiting for years for a president to say, they say they can't get anything done. Right. What they well, need to the do is out. say, call them out. Say, 
I want to pass this law, but this person over here is doing this to stop this, mm -hmm. and this person over here is helping him to do this. Right. And that what you need to do, people in Ohio, you need to call your guy over here, and you need to call your guy over here, and then the rest of you need to call your people. If you want this done, yeah. get up off your ass, mm -hmm. just like you did to put me in office, and do something about it. Right. But you know, in the gerrymandered districts, People in that guy's districts is going to be oh, you can, gerrymandered. You, they're going to all you vote get, for him. Okay, well, they're gerrymandered towards a Republican or a Democrat. What you Hardcore. do is you 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 get somebody in there that's not a Ted Cruz kind of right. a person. You put somebody in there that's a Republican, but it's a way more of a moderate one. Yeah. You know, because we're looking for people in the middle, but a lot of these gerrymandered things, you wind up with people that are just complete nutcases. I mean, complete fucking nutcases. And it says, it says, le to me, I finally decided, it says less about the person that they send to D.C. Yeah. than it does about the assholes that are voting for him. Yeah. I, I think the country deserves Sanders Trump. It was interesting, a uh, little piece of news. That's I a saw. real serious choice here. Yeah. There was an interesting piece of news I saw. They said that the guy was reporting from the Trump camp. When Hillary came on to give her speech, because she was the first, you just you couldn't even hear what she was saying because they were just booing, you know, Hillary mm -hmm. in the Trump at the auditorium. Yeah. And then Bernie came on, complete silence, in the Trump camp. These are the hardcore Trumps that are there, in New Hampshire, to, yeah, for the victory party. Yeah. Booed the whole time she's talking. He got on totally listening. Oh, you mean Trump's people? Trump's people, totally well, listening to what Sanders. They're waking saying. it up. You know, they've spent all this time and money and effort. The submarine, Hillary. You mm. got to be real careful what you wish for. Right. Here's the thing, though. Because he's going to be a whole lot harder to beat than she would be. A I think lot we're, harder. I think we're closer mm. to a Trump and Sanders, but I think uh, on the outside rail there, a little Jeb, Jebby Bush is coming for his little one run in the. Oh, sun. he's going to get his chance to come up to the top, and, and, and then he's. Could, we could have Trump Sanders. We also could have Bush Clinton. He's going to get hit. You know. Jeb and Cruz, I mean, Rubio had his opportunity, and he kind of choked. You think he's done? I think for the, a, a big you part of the that time, yeah. Just him? Jeb needs his opportunity to say something stupid like Stonehenge was really an ancient carnival ride. Yeah, to give him his moment to blow up. Yeah, you know, he's going to come up with some horse shit. Plus the fact that everybody's just got Clinton fatigue, and they've sure as shit got Bush fatigue. The thing is, I don't think Clinton and Bush know how to be authentic. Like, no. You know, she's trying to be like Bill and Jeb's trying to play his dad and his brother. And his brother was, you know, please don't try and mimic that guy. Uh, you know, his brother was a good old boy. You'd want to have a beer with him. He's a frat boy. Yeah, he's a frat boy. Not, not a very bright frat. Boy. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Well, who's campaigning now in South Carolina? With yeah. Jeb. Uh, and see, that could be just what it takes to remind everybody. Yeah. Why they don't want Jeb yeah. He's got with an exclamation lately. point? Mama came on board the other day, and you know, where he was all on yeah. his own, and now he's trying to bring the band back. If you will. Anyway, interesting times in politics. So maybe what they need—they have Jeb with an exclamation point. Maybe they need W with a question mark. But W dot dot dot. Like remember? Exactly. So that was an interesting trip yeah. to Minnesota. That it you was. Had. It gave me an interesting insight into. Did you talk to them about uh, Sanders, and are they just are they totally you know? Yeah, they're of the mindset which I think most Republicans are is the country's never going to vote for a socialist. Okay, now here's that's that's it. That's here, here's the line. The, here's the and, thing, and they hope Sanders is it because they'll win. Yeah, what is K through 12 that's, education? That's free education. Yeah. Now, and that education. would be considered. What's the difference between free education and K through 12 and uh, college? K through 12 is not socialist. Okay, you're not paying taxes for that. Okay. Yeah. What about they your, want the government? What about your Medicare and your medic? What about your Medicare and your Medicaid? Is that not socialist? Yeah. Okay. What's the difference? Huh? No, huh? I don't, don't. There is no difference. Yeah. But there's a surface argument. He's a socialist. He just he uh -huh. wants to give everything free, and there's and there's not enough, nowhere near the money to do that. And I keep saying, well, what is he giving free here? Two things: health care and education. Mm -hmm. That's really the only two things. Yeah, that's going to keep freebies. you healthy. And, it's and gonna, how can you argue against an educated populace? Uh, it's going to create jobs. It's, it's going to create entrepreneurs. You know what I mean? You know? It's stupid. Somebody, Here's what the Democrats need to do. Free education for America equals three months of the Iraq war. We need that. I'm going to go 
I'm going to write that memo up. What? Oh. Right. Free, how, edu free education for all Americans equals how many days of the exact the Iraq war? Ooh. That's what we need to, that's how Bernie needs to hit that. Yeah. I th because I think you're going to find out free education for Americans for a year equals about three months of the Iraq war. And what would, that do, we were for the, what for would that do years. for the economy and for yeah. our businesses and yeah. people are making more money because they're, you know, yeah, yeah why would that be a their, bad thing? Their attitude is we're overdrawn $19 trillion and Bernie giving away free stuff is just going to put us deep in debt and it's too expensive. Yeah. They have no problem with war. Rubio, Trump. Why is that? Uh, why all of them are saying we need to upgrade our military. Why is it they don't have trouble spending and allocating money for the war machine, right. yet they do for education. education. See, if people start asking these questions and thinking about these questions and then coming up with their own rationale, and instead of just giving to, surface things, he's a socialist. Did the Iraq war make he's it safer? Socialist. He's no. a Kenyan. He's black. Right. He's white. And just stiff-arming so, yeah. him. Socialist wants to give everything free. Yeah. So it's it's over it's not knowing even what a socialist is. Well, there's that because really there's, what they're saying is communist, right? Y yes. Aren't they? Well, no. Because yeah, where's the example of so, socialism? Well, socialism. I looked that up, and the definition of socialism, I believe, is a government that controls the production of things. Right. That, but that isn't is what he, he's talking about. No, 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 no. No, he's not controlling production. <laughs> he's a democratic socialist. We should figure out what the hell does that mean. But the problem is we don't know what that means. Really unless, you're, unless you include the production of, a, of an educated populace. Is that is that production? Yes. Yeah. It, I mean, to me, the education of a society does nothing but good things for but the I economy. Think, I think even the people that sleepwalk through things are starting to wake up. That's the part it's that really I It's really hard because you're dealing yeah. with real-life stuff. You can't. And college has gotten crazy out the wazoo. But uh, I agree. We already paid through 12. We're just saying we need 16. Yeah, but it, we pay through K through 12, yet nobody really places a serious value on that education. Okay, but they, everybody knows that if you get a high school education these days, you're not going to get much of a job, so you anything. really need something more. Yeah. Now, it, whether that education that goes beyond that is to teach you how to cut hair, to be a, 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 a dental hygienist, whether it's to work on cars, whether it's to be a rocket scientist or a teacher or a doctor, whatever it is, it needs to be, it needs to be free. Question it's I, for the benefit of and, the general and population. And I think education needs huge uh, reform. Well, there's that. Because you know, I've talked about education before and how they go about it. You know. And see, here's 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 where uh, President Trump would be good at that. Come, come, Carl. Come. come. <laughs> if you if you put a team of people in charge of saying, okay. Oh, education people, reform people. I want you to go out into the world. I want you to go to every country on the planet yeah. that's got the best education system. I want you to benchmark what they're doing against Let's us. Have some best and come back. Here. Yes, Thank you. come back and have a, a. You know, and I think if he starts doing that, if Sanders starts doing that, if everybody starts doing that, I think that's going to be great. That's what needs to happen. Right. That's what everybody wants to have happen. That's what's been missing because everybody's protected their own little so, vested interest. That's why, and I'm sure Republican heads will spin at this, but I'm really glad Michael Moore's new movie is coming out, comes out this weekend. Oh, and that's a Because that be a is him showing the best practice. He goes out into the world to invade these other countries. Mm. And it turns out all these other countries have, everybody has the American dream or parts of the American dream except us. Oh, that's good. And so he goes to Denmark, and he goes to these countries, and, and what is where, he talking about? Is it about education? interest? Is there, yeah. yeah, this country's free education. This one's free health care. And he so he interviews these uh, countries that have all the things that we don't have. Yeah, yeah, but see, people gonna they're going to be people that really sh impact. the pe the people that really should listen to this, like my mom, for yeah. instance, won't oh, watch it be Moore. because it's Michael Moore. They yeah. discount the message because of the messenger. Right. They go, well, that guy's just some sort of fat, slobby commie, and so I'm not going to listen to him. They will not listen to the message and try and absorb any of it. The thing is everybody needs you know, to, instead listen. of leaning forward, yeah. they need to learn to, we all need to learn to sit back Lean in. and take it in and listen. Otherwise, and, and when that happens. I think there'll be happens, enough stuff to enlighten a bunch of people that don't really realize. It's kind of, to me, what it sounds like, and I haven't seen the film, 
it sounds like he's going to bring to film all the things Bernie Sanders is saying. Yeah. So I think it's a great thing oh, for Bernie Sanders. Oh. Did you see the second ad Bernie did? Uh, Where the torn faces? Yes. Which was done this, outside. It would have been done like someone like you and me doing it. Now. Yeah, this it, it, they bought it too. Yeah, Bernie Sanders. it was. Oh, it did. Somebody yeah, outside just yeah. sit, sent it to him and said, "Hey, what about this?" Well, they put it up online and it, yeah. caught, it caught viral. Uh, I tell you what, he's done that and the uh, that's kind of the Simon that Will and I Garfunkel am. Remember, thing. Yeah, yeah. he's that's, doing all those the cool are, advertising. He's doing the cool ads and even everybody on Joe in the morning, even all the Republican pundits that were sitting yeah. there go. These are the best ads we've seen in years. Hey, uh, and so the Simon Garfunkel ad was really powerful. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, it it uh, you know I I think if everybody everybody's starting to wake up, I kind of yeah. like that. And and it, there is a shit storm coming. It's and I'm going to use that. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to say shit storm on the. On the uh, hey, if Trump did it, if President Trump did it, this it, language with Trump. Oh, and he's pussy saying. Thing? Yeah, and he said, and t- I yeah, said. and he and he said, tell them to fuck themselves. Oh, yeah. saying pussy on this on this show. Are you kidding me? We that's just that's <laughs> calm. <laughs> I forgot we're on cable, and no, we're not, not talking on about a we're, on you know, we're not talking about a cat or women's anatomy. We're talking about somebody that's a wuss. If it bothers you that much, substitute W for P. Oh, wussy. We'll yeah. Yes. So anyway, the politically correct Carl. Mike. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. No, we're not really playing. Yeah. Correct. Uh, so what else going on? That's it. Didn't you have something in Dallas that you read about? Yeah, but let's do another episode that's just that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, can you edit this part out then? Huh? Well, edit this part out. Or not. So we are, we are left. This is the rough shit. This is us. Uh, <laughs> you get the rough taste? This is how it works. This is, you are listening to sausage being made. No, see how pretty that is? Squish, squish. squish. All right, so we're going to just end the show right now? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, let's end it now, wrap it up, and then we'll do a whole other one on this. Okay. So (laughs) there you have it, folks. The sausage is not pretty. You should probably cut. No? You're going to leave this? Yeah. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. All right. Well, uh, the shitstorm, yes, is coming. Yeah. And Uh, it's going to be good. It's going to be good. And Carl is... No, coming yeah. over. Oh, he's still got a few more months to huh? pull me in. Oh, yeah. I'll tell you, I will say at this time, right now, at this moment, if it's Clinton versus Trump, I'm torn. I know. I know. I, I, can't, I can't vote for Clinton. I can't do so it. So you're and, there. And I, You've yeah, already I, crossed no, I'm the already threshold. there. I'm crossing the Rubicon Republican? on this one. And I, you, know, you, know what pushed me, you know what pushed me over there? What? The three speeches at two and a quarter a pop for Morgan Stanley. Was it Morgan was it? Stanley three or Goldman Sachs or whoever it is? Yeah, three speeches. Six hundred seventy-five thousand dollars. Yes. What oh, she a lot said. of money for a speech. They, well, they well, want something they, for that. Yes. Yes. Wait. Everybody's waking up to that fact. People pay somebody two and a quarter to sit down and talk to them for an hour. They're going to expect something in return. And everybody wants the transcripts of the speeches. And she has yet to release the transcripts of the speeches. That's going to be interesting. Oh, they want the transcripts? Oh, of, yeah. So it was a private talk? Yeah, it's just so a Morgan bunch Stanley of... Morgan Stanley investors? A, yeah, well, Morgan Stanley or Goldman Sachs or somebody. I don't know. It's one of the so big ones. It's they're what cream I'm, de la yeah. cream people. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, sure. They didn't do it on a... No, they're not going to get... In a big ballroom with no, a bunch of people. Not gonna, no, 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 no. this no, is a well, private I don't, talk? I don't know. I don't you can't really call it a speech, though. I don't know what it was. We're going to find out. And so that was, that right there is It enough. wasn't videotaped? That's, that's, no. Well, For 225000 Don't Somebody's going to videotape. Somebody, somebody's going to videotape that. Don't you think? Yeah. People don't want the establishment, Michael. Somebody needs to ask the question, were there tapes? Were recordings done? Nobody's asked that question. Really? You, that I seems like my first you. question. Yeah, I'm that asking. was. I mean, that's like the Richard Nixon uh, Watergate. Two hundred twenty-five thousand. I'm guessing a little videotape machine was on. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Somebody's Come on. got that recorded. So anyway. Yeah. Yeah. She gave three of them, huh? Yeah. So anyway. Anyway. All right. A shit storm's coming. Yeah. One way or another. And that's what. It, that's what I love the most. Nobody knows which direction that shit storm's coming in. No. Every, nobody knows at this point oh, how no. it's all shaking up. I love it. It's going to come from all directions. Yes. Ooh. Ooh. 
I'm just giving you shivers <laughs> thinking about it. And stay with us as Carl Mike ex- as Carl Mike brings you the shit storm <laughs> <laughs> weekly right yeah. here at carlmike.net. Yeah. Yeah. And we want to hear from you, so put your comments in our little page there about the shit storm. Where do you think the shit storm is going to come yeah. from? Or check us out on Facebook at Carl yeah. Mike. We want to hear from you. Please. Peace. Out. <laughs>